So what we're going to take a look at today is the Persistent World mod for Mountain Blade. I'm actually going to be doing a series of videos on this in a hardcore role-playing server. Uh, what the Persistent World mod for Mountain Blade Warband is, we'll go right to the actual topic for it, and uh, go down the list a little bit. So up to eight castle-owning factions, which need a multiplayer called teams, and two extra categories, commoners, one is for players joining the game, changing between the main factions who want to play alone, and outlaws, which players who repeatedly kill t team members in a short time are restricted to so uh, the whole thing about this is 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 a role-playing mod um it's based upon the scenes like that you would see in mountain blade say a town but it's a large map uh, kind of like a battlefield as well there are multiple towns and areas for players to be playing in there like they said there's up to eight castle owning factions there is also peasants and uh serfs there are various classes from combat classes to outlaws to doctors to serfs um, the character I'm actually playing as is a serf in the hardcore role-playing server, and I'll go over his background in a little, but yeah, you can buy items on it, you can sell items, there's stockpiles, there's a lot to it. Uh, there'll be a link directly to this that has the entire description that you can read through yourself, and also you can uh, download the mod from right here. And if you've never installed a mod for Mountain Blade, it's really quite easy here. Let me actually just show you where your mods go. So if I go to my Steam folder where I have Mountain Blade installed... La la la, common, okay, so Mountain Blade Warband, um, you get into here, Mountain Blade Warband, you have the modules folder, and this is just where your mod folders go. So, for this, this is Persistent World 4.3, I just extracted it right into here, Persistent World 4.3, now if I'm to go to Steam and launch Mountain Blade, all I have to do in order to launch this is Persistent World, select it from the, uh, the list of mods that I already have installed. And it's right there, play Mountain Blade, boom, and I go right into it. But let me just give you my character background real quick and show you where you can sign up for the Hardcore Roleplaying server if you are so interested. There is also public servers, which um, I would say check out the Nexus one. I would say check out the Trojan one as well, but um, yeah, not too many players on that, and I am actually banned on that due to an uh, admin who I got into it with. And yeah, instead of getting a temp ban or anything like that, um, even though he was... Here, yeah, well, you can re read about it. Here, I'll leave you a link to the thread of what happened on there. Let's see. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Severe admin abuse. Yeah, this happened to multiple of us uh, with some of the guys that I'm playing with. So, yeah, you can see me right here. Um, complaining on here, blah, blah, blah. And those are some of the admins from other servers and stuff like that. Yeah, lots of fun stuff. But um, let me, before I get off key... We'll go to Nexus. Nexus is where I play uh, the hardcore role playing. So, website I will have linked below, but all you have to do in order to apply for this is I have uh, sections that are actually unlocked on here because I have been accepted and everything like that. But if you go down here, let's see, admin apps, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for hardcore role playing. Blah, 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 blah. Hardcore RP server. Here we go. So, Hardcore RP server, I'm in the members, you won't see the members section until you're actually accepted and your application goes through. So basically the process for getting on the Hardcore role-playing server is you apply for getting on it first, like what would make you a good fit for it, if you understand what role-playing is. Role-playing, um, if you've never done anything of, of it before, this is kind of um, like playing, say, Dungeons and Dragons or... Um, Pathfinder, stuff like the pen and paper games where you actually come up with a background for a character and you play into the role of the character without any metagaming. Metagaming is if you take something from out of context for the character or, or out of character. So you don't do any of the out of character stuff. Well, you can do it in game, but there is ways, which I'll show you in the video afterwards, kind of the way it goes. But All right, so we'll go to approved biography. This is the whole background that I came for my character. So everybody had to come up with a biography for the character they're playing in the game and apply for a role in the first place. So I applied for a fisherman, got it, and I'm a fisherman for the commoner faction. So here's my character, Drenlod Arokasen. So this is all a character that I wrote up completely myself. So here's his profile. Character's full name, Drenlod Arokasen. Character's age, 26. Character gender, male. He is character's nationality. Remember, only a Cal Calradia lore. He's a Nord. Okay, so character's skin color, white, eye color blue, hair color blonde, uh, hair length long, body marking scar on one side of the nose, upper chest, and right arm. Approved role, fisherman. Uh, his interests are fishing, hunting, melee combat, drinking, and women. He likes ale, loose women, fishing, a good fight, and excuse to use his wits and cunning. 
dislikes violence against the peasants, women, and children, and he dislikes tyrants as well. Flaws, he has a hard time backing down from a fight, even when outnumbered and outarmed, will often resort to violence when he can't talk his way out of a situation, and drinking. Has no allergies, uh, personality. Having spent his time on the battlefield, Drenlot is not afraid to come to blows, which is fit fitting given his short temper when things don't go his way. Before coming to blows, often Drenlod will resort to his wit and cunning, which at times he overestimates, which make him come off as egotistical. He believes there is no problem that can't be solved by a shared keg or ale or a shared keg of ale or fist fight. Drenlot has no problem with a hard day's work for a fair wage, but also has no problem bending his morals or looking the other way for some quick coin. At home alone in the wilderness, or amongst a group at the tavern, he's a man who is careful with his words and who he confides in. His appearance is he's 5 foot 11 inches, long sun bleached blonde hair tied back with a long beard tied as well. Scar on his left nostril from a drunken fight where the opponent pulled a knife and a large scar on his chest extending onto his upper right arm from a near-fatal sword wound on the battlefield. He has a medium but muscular build. What he lacks in bulk, he makes up for in muscle and height. Often tan from spending his days out fishing or in the wilderness. He has eyes that seem distant and a weathered appearance that makes him seem older than he actually is. Uh, brief history. Born of a successful Nordic raider and shield maiden, Drenlod Arokson was trained from a young age to live off the land and fight tooth and nail for both his mother and father. Drenlod's father, Angvsvin, spent most of his time away not only raiding, but learning from the scholars of these distant lands. When home, he imbued the knowledge of these lands and his son, not only returning with treasure, but often books from the raids he took part in. Between these lessons and knowledge and thinking from his father, when home, and constant combat training from his mother, Narf, Drenlod often found himself at odds with the other children often fighting and getting the upper hand one-on-one, -on -one, but sometimes on the end of beatings when those he defeated ganged up to get revenge against him. When becoming of age, Drenlod decided to follow in his father's footsteps and became a raider, following Jarl Rakolin into Swadia. Quickly establishing himself as one of the fiercest warriors in his party, he was earning a reputation both at home and abroad. During one of the summer raids to Swadia, Drenlod found himself appalled that the Jarl would offer no quarter to the women and children of one of the villages they were raiding. When the opportunity presented itself during a battle, Drenlod attacked Jarl Rakolin, <laughs> attacked Jarl Rakolin, killing him but not before receiving a near-fatal blow across his chest and arm. Nearly succumbing to his injuries and fever, Drenlod recovered and returned to his home. Rumors that he had slain the Jarl were spread amongst the party and village, but no proof could be brought forth. Now Drenlod chooses to spend his days as a fisherman and his nights drinking ale, vowing never to go on another raid after seeing the true atrocities that can be brought about in them. And yes, here is a thumbnail of the character that I came up with. So, yeah, that's the basic background. What I'm going to do is show you a bit of the actual in-game now, which is probably what you've been waiting for. But this is just a brief background on what's going on. So, yeah, check out the game, and we'll go from there. So, here is the server that I primarily play on at the moment. It is a hardcore role-playing server. Uh... When you load in, you see you have all the rules that go for the game, but I can explain it as we go along. So let me join the game. Since this is a hardcore role-playing server, you'll see, yes, so I currently have 5,424 gold in the bank. But uh, I am role-playing as a fisherman. So, my character is a fisherman, nothing more to him at the moment. Just a typical merchant-style class. But what I'm going to do is go and pick this up and show you what I spend most of my time doing since I'm a fisherman. What I can do is attach this to my back like a backpack and I have storage on my back now. And this is just one of the villages in this scene. This is kind of like the commoner village. But, see here, these are like grape stalks for pruning for people who want to make wine. Um, these are cart uh, carts for horses. These are saddlebags for horses. Unfortunately, since this is a role-playing server, there is only one horse breeder that you have to buy a horse off of. Uh, more strictly in line with playstyle than you'll see on the public servers. So this is where I can come to cook meat or fish, and also salt them. Salting is what I'll do because it's usually worth more money. And here, right here, actually is a salt mine, which is where a miner can come and get stuff. So if we go down into it, yes, you can see here's the salt that they can mine. Mining pick, uh, salt sacks. Usually you'll see these, this is where you'd sell stuff and uh, 
stock stuff and buy stuff from. But since this is a hardcore role-playing server, all the economy is based off of the players. So you can't buy and sell stuff to those piles. Well, technically you could, but you're not supposed to. Uh, you actually have to buy and negotiate with other players. So since I'm a fisherman, we actually have a little uh, guild going on. There's currently, I don't think anybody else on with me. Oh, there's one other person on with me at the moment, which is, this just started, uh, the server just started back up on Friday, so numbers are kind of dwindled at the moment. But hopefully there can get some influx. I'll have the address where to apply for a role and everything beneath. But yeah, this is what I spend most of my time doing as a fisherman. So I could explore around the map, but what I'm going to do is go catch some fish real quick. I currently have two cooked fish on my belt that I would sell. So this is uh, my personal menu right here. Just I hold this by holding down C. This is normally where you get your uh, character stats and stuff if you're a normal mountain blade. But I can toggle name labels, toggle faction names and name labels, chat overlay, local or faction chat, attach nearby cart or pack, which is what I could do. Here, I'm just going to detach it, but I could also do this, attach nearby card or pack, and it'd be a lot quicker than when I just do it the other way. So we detach it, that way it's detached from me, I can access it, and I can place the objects that I have in my uh, hands right now into it. So I've got cooked fish right here, all my hands are completely full at the moment. So what I'm going to do at the moment is uh, just put the cooked fish in here, that way I have hands free. So for fishing, you're supposed to look for spots where you can actually hear them jumping out of the water. You kind of hear like a little splashing like that, and you can see those ripples there too. That indicates there's fish in this area. So in order to set a net down, I have to go and just drop it in the water. So I go underwater, drop my net, and that'll over time catch fish. But I also have a fishing um, trident or a spear I don't know technically what the name is. Uh, fishing spear. So what I can do is it will randomly catch fish in the areas like this. So so just by thrusting it, boom, caught a fish there. And I can keep catching more and more. Okay, another fish. Okay. You know you're not supposed to use this chip, but I've been lonely trying to populate the server. I feel you on that one. Actually shooting a YouTube video to try to get more people to apply. Ha ha ha. He's inadvertently on my video. See, that one already just caught a fish over time. So now my inventory is full with three fish. I can go to here. Access this. So technically we're not supposed to be uh, talking on the global chat, that's actually one of the rules of the server. Since it is hardcore role-playing, you're supposed to do everything through local chat, which is the Q key. So you just say things to players nearby, you stay in character, but if you're doing something out of character, you do a couple of forward slashes beforehand, like say, oh, something like that, and der, der, but everything else is supposed to be in character, like um, typical role-playing, like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. Uh, still getting some of the people I play with to apply. So yeah, that just caught some more over time. So this is what I do. I'll basically fill this up with fish. La la la. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let that keep catching fish while I go and dump these two fish off. Um over here, where we've been uh, kind of stashing stuff, because I need to get some salt in order to preserve these fish. And I'll show you what that actually takes. So yes, I'm playing a fisherman who's a commoner, who's not aligned with any of the other houses. There's actual factions in this, like typical mountain blades like Swardian, um, Nord. Even though my character's a Nord, he's aligned with the commoners at the moment. So yes, don't tell anybody about this spot, but we have our own little merchant guild going at the moment where we're kind of stashing stuff. So where do I work and live? See, so I've got a couple salted fish in here, but this is where I've been leaving stuff behind. Okay. 
That was, see, that was already talking in local. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to catch the rest of these fish, then I'm going to go get a bag of salt. Actually, I need to grab a bag of salt out of there first. So I need to figure out... Uh, someone left me some. I've actually... We've actually worked out our own little uh, guild so far. But there's three of us. Uh, there's one guy who does m most of the traveling and trading of the stuff. Um, we actually have a miner. So if he needs food, I give him food. If I need salt or anything from him, he gives it to me. And... Uh, Otherwise, the other guy just sells stuff, and we split 50-50 profits. Okay, so let's cook the fish. How do you fish? Uh, here. I need to find the salt. Uh, la, 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 la. Where is it? Cooked fish. You know what? I'll just make a thing for... I'll have this guy come over to the abbey so I can show him how to fish. You know what? I'll just cook the fish. I've already got plenty of salted fish. Okay, so I'm going to show this guy to fish while I'm doing this video as well. Ha ha ha. So I'm just ending up cooking, cooking these fish. Uh, salting is a little bit more of a process, but basically I need to take a bag of salt, um, use it on a preserving table, and it puts it into piles of salt, and for each single pile of salt, um, I can salt three fish. So currently, let me grab these... You can passive fish with a net like so. with a spear. So, he is... We're currently out of character. So, I just need to catch... Let's see. How many more fish do I have left? I've got two in there, and I can carry two with this. Yep. Ask me if I get a lot of fish. Of course I do. So normally what I'd be doing here is role-playing my character, um, which I read to you at the beginning of this, all of my backstory and everything that I've written for it. So... Yeah, this is this is my lowly life as a surf. All right, let me pick back up my net. So now I've got my fishing net back. If I access this, I'm gonna go cook all these. Let me just catch one more fish. So basically there are a bunch of commoner roles that you can play like this. Um, there are winemakers, there are actual farmers, uh, what else is there? Oops, and I cannot attach this when this is on my back. There is roles of bandits, there is roles like he is right here, he is, looks like a footman. There is all sorts of different things you can do as a commoner or as say nobility, but with the hardcore role-playing is you stay in character, unlike all this out-of-character talking I've been doing. There's sailors, pirates, um, there's a whole bunch of different roles that you can apply for. And then you, once you actually get accepted for applying for a role, carts and crates, you get yourself 
horses you have to buy from a breeder. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cook all these fish. I'll show you how fish is cooked. So basically everything is done with an F menu. So I can just cook it right here in this little stove. And those are the two right here. And what I can do is go swap them out for the fish in here. Yada, yada, yada. And see, he just said you cook rather than salt. Already have a bunch salted. Stock of cooked and salted for variety and pricing. So yeah, so basically this is what I can do as a fisherman. He's a combat role, so he could end up in war or stuff like that. And since I'm a commoner, um, nobody's really going at war with me or anything like that. Factions can get into wars with each other. See here, there's outlaw rules, commoners, and these are the various kingdoms and places. So Kingdom of Nords. Uh, Saranad Sultanate, uh, Abbey, Orange Faction, which isn't named yet, Nord Outpost and Mining Company. So you have places where you can make wine here, the saddlebags. This is basically the gist of it, but um, I will be doing some recordings of the actual role-playing and stuff when the server is more populated. <laughs> where do I store them? <laughs> That's for me to know. <laughs> so yeah, it's a nice little take of uh, on Mountain Blade. One of the more new things you could do, but I'm going to stop recording here. And yeah, I shall be back with definitely some more videos of Persistent World when I'm in character and the server is more populated. So definitely check out the link below, apply for some roles if this interests you, or try out some of the public servers. Just be sure to read the rules and such first, so you don't end up banned, even though I'm banned on one server at the moment. Yeah, that's mainly due to a douchebag admin. But yeah, I'll catch you guys later.